managing the game. And the other question was a, a, a moment to reflect back on game five. You guys talked a lot about patience and letting the game come to you. And Al talked about, uh, he used the word group so many times in his post game. Can you talk about those kinds of uh, issues, please? Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, Jason's um, game management, I think that's, an, that's a constant evolving thing. I think the game is always changing. Uh, coverages are changing. Matchups are changing. So you never know what yeah. situation you're going to be in. But, uh, you know, Jason does a great job preparing for situational basketball. He's always watching games. He's watching edits. So uh, yeah. has a great awareness to um, just how the game is being played at that particular time. So uh, he takes a lot of pride in studying that. And, yeah, I mean, the patience comes from just not having any expectations. Like, just because it's a – it's a playoff game against an NBA team and you don't know how it's going to go. It's not supposed to go a certain way. The most important thing is sticking together, staying in the present and working to execute. And particularly, I thought that was a, that was one of our better games uh, just from a poise standpoint of not playing with an expectation. Like we, it was uh, a closeout game against a team that was really good and that was desperate. And I thought we handled it well with our poise. Doesn't mean we always played well, but uh, I love the intentionality that we play with. I like the togetherness that we play with and, I thought we just kept staying in the present and making plays on both ends of the floor. Well, was there a time during this season when that kick kicked in, you know, the, the, that uh, willing to be let the game come to you as a group? Was there a point in time to reflect back on? Um, I, I, don't, I don't know if there's any one. I think it's just a gradual progression as a team uh, of just managing your own expectations. I think the guys did a good job of that this year going into a lot of games thinking we were supposed to win or it was supposed to go a certain way. Like, that's just not how it is. And uh, I thought the guys approached that with, with a high level of maturity. Like, um, just because we're a good team doesn't mean it's going to go our way. doesn't mean it's going to go well. And uh, you got to stay present. you got to execute. Uh, you got to work to be the tougher team. So uh, the guys are doing a good job of that. Next question will be from Bobby Manning. Hey, Joe. Uh... What's the uh, latest on Chris Stapps going into this next series? Has he, you know, advanced to, you know, contact or, you know, three on three, four on four, anything like that coming up into this next week? I have no idea. I don't have an update on that. And um, what's just your early, um, you know, thoughts on Indiana, New York, the different challenges those two teams could pose? Yeah, uh, both are really good teams. Both present different challenges and um, just have to be ready to take those on. Next question will be from John Corrales. Joe, along the lines of what you were saying earlier, uh, Al said after the, the game that he was proud of the group for finishing off a game that, that maybe in the past probably wouldn't have gone their way. What value is there to facing a couple of games where you didn't quite have it maybe the way you wanted it, Maybe you fell into some of the same patterns as the past, but instead of letting that get the best of you, you ended up pulling it out. I mean, I think the value comes from not having an expectation. Uh, I really think that's the key to really anything. If you go into something thinking it's supposed to go a certain way, then your um, your your mind and your your body is clouded by what is necessary to do in that moment. And so uh, the one thing this team has done a good job of this season is not playing with any expectations of, if you're winning by a lot, if you're losing by a lot, it doesn't really matter. Like at the end of the day, uh, it takes what it takes and uh, you got to be present. And so the team has done a good job fighting for that. I think it's important, uh, managing our own expectations. When you talk about that, uh, you talk about things like humility. Uh, that's not the usual type of things that we hear from a coach or, or maybe even the players hear from a coach. Um, what's that process been like getting these guys to kind of buy into uh, that mindset and, and, you know, maybe get away from some of the things that, that have bugged them in the past and get into the stay present, uh, success looks different every day and having the humility to maybe take a step back, even if you are you used to being a, you know, a certain kind of player. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the, that's the real answer to what everybody asked all year about like, Oh, what's the difference between this year, last year, what's the difference between you? What's this, what's that? Like the difference is we've had time. And uh, we've had experiences to pull from and we've had time to talk about those. We've had time to talk about how we want to go about what our daily process is. We've had time to talk about how we want to handle situations. We've had time to talk about how we've handled past situations. So 
I think that is the that's it right there. Like throughout the off season and throughout the season, we've had time to build a relationship together to have open, honest communication about how we want to go about doing things and how you should handle um, different situations and and uh, experiences. And I think you know the words that we use are no more than the words that we talk about every day and kind of and like the words you use end up reflecting the type of group that you have and so or the type of group that you want to emulate. And so I think it just. That's the, the the truest answer to what's different is we've had time to talk about how we want to go about doing things and how we want to go about uh, approaching situations and experiences and how we handle successes and failures uh, together. Thanks. Next question will be from Adam Himmelsbach. Joe, kind of along those lines, um, I think Kraus just mentioned the specific line, but the, the mantra you've kind of embraced, the winning looks different. Um, every night, it seems like particularly recently, like players are saying that a lot to us um, and are kind of really grasping that. What was it like um, kind of getting to that point? Did they feel that way right away? Did it take some kind of discussions to make them view um, kind of the game through that prism? Yeah, I mean, again, uh, you can only be as good as your players are willing to to be and willing to accept. And so like the guys, uh, I mean, they always have been. I think it's just the experiences that they're going through, like they've always been open-minded. They've always wanted to be coached. They've always understood what it takes to win. It just takes time to go through different processes. So you can't get to any point unless the guys are willing to do it and willing to do it together. Uh, and then again, like uh, one of the things that I think uh, we enjoy doing together is studying the league, like studying wins and losses, studying why a team wins, studying why a team loses, why a team calls a timeout, why a team doesn't call a timeout, why a team goes on a run, what stops a run, uh, what are the, what are the keys towards winning a game uh, going, you know, a lot of the times throughout the year, we wouldn't just watch ourselves. We would watch uh, a segment of a whole nother game and say, Hey, like, here's what's going on around the league. Here are the trends. So I think just building an awareness to the game itself. So many times, I think when you're, especially in the NBA, you just get so caught up uh, like a horse with blinders worried about your own team and your own game that you don't realize that like, Hey, there's a lot of stuff going on around the league that we can learn from. And the guys have been, really coachable and, and they've learned and uh, that allows us to pull from a different situations. Last question will be from Jared Weiss. So the whole year you talked about structuring the offense, being able to attack cross matches, having all sorts of different variations for those moments, really to be prepared for the playoffs. So how do you think that approach and preparation paid off now that you actually are halfway through a potential title run and, especially seeing how you guys tried to also put your opponent into those same situations. How do you feel like you guys are operating compared to your opponents in that way? Yeah. I mean, I think the most important thing is, can you uh, create a, a team of uh, from the standpoint of being open-minded, right? I have an understanding that every game is different. Uh, every series is different. And that is, but that's kind of because of the type of team that we have, uh, we kind of recognize that trend in the middle of the year where teams started putting the five on KP, then putting the five on, uh, Drew, then putting the five on JT, then they were in drop and they were switching. So it, like throughout the season, you know, if you remember, like after the Denver game, we learned a lot because teams guarded us a different way. And then it was the Houston game. They guarded us a different way. And then so we were just able to pull from on both sides of the floor, the open mindedness to, hey, like because of the type of team we have, teams are going to be creative. They're going to be creative and they're going to be extra physical. So let's can we be as open minded as we can? And what you don't want to do is get into a playoff series and say, hey, we can't do this because our guys don't feel comfortable doing it or we haven't done it yet. And so I thought one of the, the best things the guys did coming into the season was having an open mind of like, Hey, here are some rules and structure, but at the end of the day, we got to be able to do anything and everything at any particular time, because we don't know what matchups are going to present itself. We don't know what health is going to look like. Uh, and so I think uh, the guys have done a good job of that. And that's been on both sides of the ball. And it's important to keep that open mind in this talk about Indiana and New York, they're two different teams, but present different challenges, um, you know, tactically. And uh, can we quickly adjust to what we need to do, do that gives us the best chance to, to take advantage? All right. Thank you so much, Joe. Yep. Thank you, guys.